Coimbra is a city that is rich in history, but it's also known to be a university town. I'm Josh with Expats Everywhere. And I'm Kaylee. And we're going to show you how Coimbra does an amazing job of keeping its historical roots very much alive, but still having a contemporary feel. So let's see what this beautiful city has to offer. Coimbra is one of the most populated cities in Portugal with a little over 100,000 people. Of course, this doesn't compare to Lisbon, some of the big cities around Lisbon, and Porto. But after you take those out of the equation, Coimbra is right up there. The city is known to be in the central part of Portugal, but it is moving a little further north. So keep that in mind for the weather. We will talk about that more a little later. It's not on the coast, but it does sit on the Mandango River. The Roman influence in the architecture is still very evident today, but this is where they do a great job of mixing the old and new, because even though the architecture is older and more of that charming look, the feel of the city is young and present day. The city has an interesting past, so we want to take a few minutes to tell you a little bit about its history. Now, Coimbra is known for the tragic love story of Pedro and Inez. This story has been passed down from generation to generation, so it's hard to tell what's fact and what's fiction, but we'll tell you a little bit about it. Pedro was the son of King Alfonso IV and the heir to the throne. In the early 1300s and at the age of 19, he married Constanza of Castile to strengthen the alliance between Portugal and Spain. Well, he actually ended up falling in love with the lady-in-waiting, and their love affair was no secret. You'll have to read up on the details, but as you can imagine, his father, the king, was not happy. And the story goes that he had her killed, which of course did not sit well with Pedro, who after his father died, when he became king, had Inez's body dug up and crowned her as queen. So places like the Fountain of Tears, where it is believed she was killed, and the Monastery of Alcabasa, where their coffins are located, are places to visit and learn more about this tragic love story. Another historical thing to note is that Coimbra has the oldest university in Portugal and one of the oldest continuously operating universities in the world. The University of Coimbra itself, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, not just because of the beautiful architecture, but also because of its unique culture and traditions and the role it has played in Portugal's history. How about visiting a place where kings used to live? Well, Biblioteca Joanina is a library that is a must see, but you will need tickets. They like to regulate how many tourists come in and out because they wanna keep it well preserved. We are gonna show you shots of other great things in the city, but we want to tell you guys what it would be like to actually live here. So let's start with housing. We were able to check out a few rental properties with a company called Radical, who has several properties around Coimbra. We did a video with them, so be sure to check that out after this to see the apartments for yourself. The link will be in the description. What we found is that renting is super affordable. We saw three different apartments in great locations, and the studios and T1s range from 480 to 600 euros. Internet was included, and utilities can be as low as 20 euros a month. A more reasonable amount to budget for, though, would be closer to 60 euros. There are even cheaper housing options out there as well. If you're looking for a bigger place to rent, such as a T3 or T4, you can find amazing deals in great locations for 600 to 900 euros. What about buying? If you want to be a bit more rural and outside of the city, plus get something that needs to be fixed up, you can find prices as low as 50,000 to 70,000 euros. Remember, these might need some love, though. There are also apartments in the city for low prices as well. You can get a studio or T1 for around 100,000 euros and a T3 for around 150,000 euros. Now, keep in mind, you can also spend more for newer builds, premium location, amenities, and more. But if you're looking for a deal and maybe something to fix up for yourself, Coimbra is a great place to look. Let's take a look at some other costs. Because there are many university students here, you know there are deals to be had. You just have to find which place is having a special on which day. It's very doable to find the play of the day for well under 10 euros. These special deals also go for the drinks. There is plenty of outdoor seating at the different restaurants and cafes, so it's nice to grab a meal, drink, or ice cream. 
Since we are talking about sitting outside, let's break down the weather for you. Keep in mind that Coimbra is in the central part of Portugal, so it does get cooler here. Now, it doesn't have a coast, but like we said before, it is by a river. The winter can get rainy and have average temperatures as low as 40 degrees. The average highs in the winter can get up into the 60s. This area is humid, so it does get damp. The summers are super pleasant with the hottest parts of the summer only reaching into the 80s and not being too humid. The lows are in the 50s, so it doesn't get too cool. You definitely do not need a car here, but there are hills. So what is the preferred mode of transportation? The electric scooters, of course. You will see these whizzing up and down the streets. So if you're feeling adventurous, jump on one of the many scooters around the city where you can pay as you go to rent it and leave it when you're done. The downtown area is flatter, so you can choose to walk here. The city does have steps in some places. There's also an inexpensive bus to get around. Of course, you can walk along the several pedestrian-only streets and across or along the river. There are lots of amazing things around Coimbra. You can go shopping or to the movie theater at Alma Shopping. You can spend time relaxing at the Botanic Gardens. Or you can admire the old but charming architecture. But Coimbra is known to be a university town, so what does that mean for those looking to retire here or those with a family? Well, we aren't retired, but we do have a young daughter, so we're gonna share with you about what life would be like with a family here. All right, guys, so you guys know it's time for the opinion section, so we're gonna dive right in. And if you guys don't know already, I'm Josh, she's Kaylee, and we're expats everywhere. We've been traveling around the world for the past 12 years. We've had a couple breaks back in the States, but we just love traveling around and being in countries for a bit, at least a year. And uh, we're here in Portugal now and loving it. So let's talk about our opinions of Coimbra. So I mentioned that it's good for retirees and families. And obviously we're not retired, but we do have a family. So what does that look like? I think it's extremely comfortable if you have kids here. It would be a very easy place to live. And honestly, actually across the river, we saw a lot more kids over there. Yeah. So I don't know if maybe there's just a lot more going on. There's like a little like amusement park kind of thing there, yeah. um, maybe theme park over there that I think is probably popular with the kids. So we just saw a lot more kids across the river um, as opposed to walking in the downtown area. And it's maybe because when you get to like the pedestrian only streets, there are a lot of stairs to certain places, like especially up to the university and stuff. So that's not super easy with the stroller or little kids, mm. but I think that Coimbra would be a very comfortable and easy place with kids. What do you think? Yeah, for sure. I mean, to to answer your question, yes, I do think it's <laughs> easy uh, with kids. What I do want to say is that before we traveled here, and this is our first time in Coimbra, we've been here a couple of weeks. The first time that we traveled here, actually, a lot of people were talking about how there were so many hills. Now, yes, there are hills. That's absolutely true. But in my mind, I was thinking it's going to be as hilly as Porto or Lisbon. Right. And I don't find it that hilly. I, I think there's like kind of two main hills, yeah, yeah, right? There's two main hills where it kind of divides the city. Like the old and the new part of the city yeah. or whatever, the newer maybe part. maybe one hill really. Yeah. Then down in the old part of the city, yes, there are stairs and, mm -hmm. and that area is a bit hillier. But I think on the day to day, if you're living here, you're probably not hanging around the old city that much. No. So while it impacts tourists for sure, I don't know if it would impact you so much if you're living here more long term. Right. I mean, unless you're a university student, because obviously then there's lots of stairs and stuff. But I think a lot of college campuses are like that anyway, mm -hmm. depending on where you are. So that's true. So if you aren't yeah, in university or doing the touristy things, you probably would be a place that um, doesn't have too many hills or too many stairs. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you really need a car here. I think it'd be pretty easy to get around. A car would be beneficial. Especially because there's supposed to be some really great kind of little things outside of Coimbra. More, I think, like for hiking and um, nature type things that mm -hmm. are outside of Coimbra. So you might want a car for that. I'm going to go ahead and say no to cars. No I'm to gonna cars? I'm going to say no to cars because when, when we had a rental car for the first week that we were here, well, it was a couple of days really, what we noticed is that most of the places that we were going, we could have taken a train or a bus and it would have been under 10 euros per person mm -hmm. round trip. Mm -hmm. And we were paying some pretty serious uh, road taxes and yeah, tolls. Yeah, the tolls and the taxes yeah, are with the, high here. The, the Via Verde, mm -hmm. I believe, is the, the system that they have. So we were paying some pretty high taxes there. 
and we also have the fuel. You know, your Which the is fuel not consumption. Cheap. Yeah, the gas is not cheap at all. <laughs> That's true. So driving around Central, there there were a lot of taxes and tolls. So kind of different. A toll looks like the toll booth that you can go through with the e-toll. Taxes are just your driving, and there's something overhead that just dings um, all the time. It seems like. <laughs> so that is true. Uh, factor in that cost if you would like a car that it's not the cheapest in this area. I not would definitely say that the city is is for a broad range of people. Yes. Young. Old singles, couples, larger families, it would be fine. There's a really great area that's a bit more modern along the river, too, which seems mm -hmm. to be being built up. So there's mm -hmm. restaurants, there's a park. Um, so that's a great feature, a more like contemporary type feel to the city. Mm -hmm. And then you have, of course, like the old charming type feel with the architecture and everything. So there, the city has a lot going on. I really liked it. Yeah, for sure. Well, we, we often do this in these types of videos where we ask the question, would you expat that? And would you expat that means would you like to live in a city or a certain country for a certain amount of time, usually at least six months, more like a year? Uh, so what do you think? I would definitely expat Coimbra. Um, it has a feel kind of similar to Porto, which I like. It's smaller, but the location within the country, like the weather's better, um, the people are friendlier, mm. I think. I guess the weather's better for my taste you know some people want it really hot so you want to go further south but i like that it's a little cooler up here um the people are friendly um we've just had a really good experience so yes i would expat coimbra very easily expat coimbra you absolutely i would expat coimbra i think that the infrastructure here is great which mm -hmm. we didn't really talk about that much uh but in terms of roads and hospitals and um Housing. architecture housing that mm -hmm. type especially of thing especially newer housing yeah too. yeah mm -hmm. it's it's really great mm -hmm. now Obviously, we don't know if some of the homes here have amazing insulation. We don't know if you're going to get some of those like damp winters on the inside. Uh, that so, could happen. so that that could happen. Mm -hmm. We haven't been in every apartment here, believe it or not. <laughs> Shocking. So, so we can't really give an opinion on that. You'll have to to check out those energy efficient ratings and whatnot, mm -hmm. and see what year the building is constructed. But if you guys want to check out other places that we have visited and highlighted, we've created a playlist just for you right over Kaylee's head. You can check that out so you can keep watching expats everywhere. But hey, until next time, let's get moving. Bye.